everybody, I am Mike at Filmboy24. Today we're going to talk about a little refurb I did on a magazine and torque motor for my Airy 16S, but more importantly, I made a battery for it. So before we get started, I just want to say thank you to everybody that has subscribed so far. I'm overwhelmed, overjoyed and all the over things that uh, you get tingly uh, when people actually care about what you have to say or at least pretend to care about what I have to say. So thank you to everybody that has subscribed, liked, and commented on my videos. It means a lot to me. It means a lot to this channel. Continue to do so. I promise you I'll keep making videos as long as you keep watching. Okay, my Airy 16S. If you're not familiar with my particular Airy 16S, check a couple of videos ago um, my wife gave me sort of an early birthday present, surprised me. So I have this beautifully conditioned Airy 16S. It was very well kept. It's in absolutely perfect condition. Three prime lenses, a 10, a 16, and a 50. It also came with the original Aeroflex variable speed 8 volt motor. It did not come with a magazine. It did not come with the torque motor which is the motor here that attaches to the magazine that allows it to take up, and, uh, to take up your film. Uh, it did not come with this motor, which is a George Jensen 24 frames per second crystal sink motor. Where did I get the magazine and the motor? Well, I, I purchased a lot of things on an online auction site that starts with the letter before F and it had four magazines in it and they were all in very poor condition but it had some other things in it that I wanted this was a surprise I didn't even know this this motor was in the lot it wasn't pictured but when I got the lot of stuff Aeroflex lot had some airy uh, uh, original Aeroflex Aeroflex Aerof why can't I say Aeroflex airy grease a little tube of the original airy grease which i use in the uh torque motor not in the magazine uh and it also had this motor which i was super excited about but see i didn't have an airy s at the time <laughs> i had gotten it for some other things and i figured one day i might figure out how to maybe turn four not so good condition magazines into one really good condition magazine. The torque motor didn't work very well. So what I did is I took the torque motor completely apart, did it absolute as much as I could do refurb on it, which included sort of uh, oiling up the shafts, the drive shafts and gears. Now you don't want to oil the gears themselves, just two little shafts and then the drive shaft uh, once you get it opened up and I completely cleaned everything in there and there's one little grease spot where you grease the main tiny little main drive gear and cleaned it real good with some rubbing alcohol and I cleaned the brushes in the little inside the little motor and I cleaned the coils and I cleaned everything that I could possibly clean with vinegar uh, inside that motor and some rubbing alcohol and just some good old soap and water be very careful you want it only damp not wet Put it back together then it was on to the magazine well like i say i had four magazines and they were all in really really poor condition non-functioning condition i would say so i took the best one of the four and i completely disassembled it have a couple of photos i'll show you but i completely disassembled the magazine i took some parts from other magazines it was missing a spring it would the arms were, were reversed and they, they weren't working properly. I adjusted the frame counter. I took everything that you could possibly take apart on this magazine apart. And I cleaned, just like I did the torque motor, cleaned and lubricated absolutely everything. If it had surface rust, I got rid of all of that. If it had some corrosion-y green stuff on it, I got rid of that. And I put it all back together. And I put the torque motor on it. And I took my handy dandy trusty 9.6 volt battery that I made quite some time ago it was very simple and I talked about this in a previous video but it basically all it is is a 8 AA cell 
battery box, cheapo, like four or five dollars. I stripped all the wiring out of it, took the on-off switch off, or out rather. I put 1.2 volt rechargeable batteries in it, so it equals 9.6 volts instead of 12. If you use alkalines, you got a 12 volt. And I ran my own wire, and I ran it to a, soldered in a four pin XLR female plug because my camera came, plugged in, came with the original power cord. So, so essentially what, it was kind of like when I got the camera, it'd be kind of like, kind of like buying a car, your favorite car, but there's no gas to be had, so you can't really run it. And I had to create my own fuel for this thing because I didn't have a battery for it. And I didn't have any connectors for this original Airy connector. So I bought a couple online. That was loud. Sorry. So I bought a couple of these connectors online, pulled out my soldering iron, and I put this together. So without any further, I plugged it in. And everything ran beautifully. Open up the magazine. And I don't know if the camera is catching it. But you can see the spindle turning here. Or you could see it spinning on the back side here. Just like it's supposed to. Let's shut it off because it's a little bit loud. Aeroflex 16S cameras are really loud. Now, like I say, I have the sync motor. These cameras aren't made for sync sound, really. But if you cover them well enough, or I talked about it in another video, I actually shot some sync, uh, synced up some audio and shot a video about that a couple videos ago. Take a, take a look at it. At any rate, put this lid back on, or this cover. So that was nice. I can now, uh, you know, I can run it. I can test the film. I can see if it scratches. I can see how stable it is. I, but I still wanted something different. I wanted a battery that was made sort of for this camera. You see, this is an eight volt camera. This George Jensen motor is made for eight volts. This variable, variable speed airy motor is made for eight volts. And this torque motor is made for eight volts. Now you can convert these torque motors to 12 volts. You can also, you could have gotten these Jensen sync motors in 12 volts. And I believe these were only in eight volts, the variable speed ones. I think the constant speed, you may have gotten away with 12 volts, but I'm not positive on all of that. That's, that's what I believe. Anyway, so I wanted to figure out a way to run this camera closer to eight volts. 9.6 isn't going to kill the camera or the motors probably, but I didn't want to take that chance after all. It took me 20 years to pick up another Aries. I had one of these about 20 years ago. So I finally got it and now I thought about some options and I ended up buying a, well, let me get it. Sorry, I had to get up and get it. I ended up buying a battery pack or like power bank called XT Power. Let me take it out of the box. It's this XT Power Bank and you hit the little button here. It tells you how See, it's fully charged. I don't know if you can see all the reflection. But it was switchable between 9 and 12 volts. 9 volt on the bottom. Click it up, goes to 12 volts. So I had the ability to use this as a 12 volt battery pack or a 9 volt battery pack. But the biggest problem was it still just had the little 2.1 millimeter outlet or plug or whatever you call it, port. And my Aeroflex, the only thing it came with was the three lenses and the original power cord. Now this is the four pin XLR. Goes from two pin to four pin XLR. I could have made an adapter and probably messed with this. Maybe as a backup I will do that or maybe I'll just use it to power my video tap or something like that. So with my soldering iron in hand, I decided let's start putting together a true eight volt battery designed specifically to run my Aries. So what I did was I went online to that, uh, that online auction site that starts with the letter after D. And I started 
purchasing some of the things that I thought I would need. And I, maybe I overpurchased on some things because I'm not sure if I would have needed them or not. But I have the screws rattling around. I have the kit here that I put together for battery building. So I'm probably not going to go into crazy, super crazy, uber crazy detail. A lot of crazy. Then again, so am I. Let me show you what my finished product is, and then I'll show you really quick what I did to get there. I wanted to still use this cable, four pin male, so I needed four pin female. And I wanted to be able to charge this either with an adapter that I build with a four pin XLR or with the 2.1 millimeter plug here, which is really readily available anywhere and I have lots of them for a lot of devices already anyway. So this is what I came up with. It has seven of these 1.2 volt NICAD rechargeable 1000 milliamp batteries. They are double A sized, but I have seven of these soldered. Yeah, I know it's soldered. Soldered, in, but just sounds fun. Soldered in series. So it would be positive to negative, and then positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, and then your two ends are open, your positive and your negative, and you run your wires from there out to your ports. What that does is that increases your voltage, but it keeps your amperage the same. So it stays at 1,000 milliamps or one amp. I then bought some XLR female flush mount ports. I bought a a lot of four of these because I plan on making some backup batteries at some point. And that is simply this port here in the front. I needed to get some 2.1 millimeter. I think they're 2.1 by 5.5 millimeter ports here. They take that the little, uh, yeah, they, you know what it looks like. They take the little plug which is this port here. I'm not flipping you off, I'm just pointing. I've, I got 10 of those. Actually, I got more than that because I got a different brand as well. I don't know what I'm doing. I initially, I initially wanted to wire an on-off switch into here as well, so I bought a little pack of on-off switches. They're only about 80 cents each, I think. But I, I ran out of room on my battery box to wire it in. I didn't want it on the edge or on the back. I wanted to keep everything on the front because when I have it in my makeshift case, I don't want it accidentally turning off and on. So I didn't end up using the on-off switch. I don't think that's a big deal. I have another box that I bought, another hobby box like this, that's a little bit bigger that I might try an on-off switch later. And I just have the two pole on off switch, which means there's just two wires that go in and they're only your positive wires. One in, one out. And then lastly, I needed to get, this is a waterproof project box, by the way. I thought about making a battery pack out of that, but I don't know yet. I needed to get, and they may not be in here. Oh, they're in my soldering box, but I bought a 100 pack of soldering tabs. They're just little steel tabs, sort of uh, oblong shaped, and you run them across the tops of your batteries as you solder. It gives the batteries the positive and negative connection from one to the other. So I bought those. The overall cost for me, and I'm gonna show you a, a couple of pictures here of building, the building process for this battery pack, so you'll be able to see the inside and whatnot. My overall cost, to build this pack? Well, first let me tell you that if you buy an Aeroflex battery, an 8.4 volt battery specifically built for these cameras, expect to pay anywhere between $150 and say $250. My Mike's Filmboy 24 Aeroflex battery pack just under $23. 
You do the math. How many can I make? How many could I build for $150? Come on, throw it at me. Throw it at me. Six? Maybe seven, depending on if I buy more bulk parts. <sighs> the math just doesn't work out right. Or maybe it does. So I was super happy. I call this sort of like uh, my hole in one moment. My hole in one moment is when you go, holy cow, I did it. I do have a hole in one, by the way, many, many moons ago. But I think this was a better feeling than my actual hole in one moment. So there I have it. Now I have the capability of building my own 8.4 volt battery packs for my Airy 16S. Now I'm going to mess with the milliamps a little bit. I think they're a little low. I've run a couple of hundred feet through using the magazine and it's still running strong. We'll see how long it lasts. I don't know. If this is the kind of video that you enjoy, do me a huge favor right now. Yep, do it. Punch that like button. Subscribe. Leave me a comment. Tell me what you think. How about you made a battery pack? I don't know. And until the very next time that I see your lovely face, I'll see you on the next go-around.